ये मेरी दूरी पास आने लगी जानू ना जानू क्यों बुलाने लगी मेरे दिल की ये बंदगी जान बचाए Calcutta is known as the art and cultural capital of India. It's also known for its amazing street food. I walk around getting a vibe for the city. The people here are super friendly. I'm looking for a place to get a haircut. Seems like everyone's giving me different directions. I finally find a place that not only gives a haircut, but also a wicked massage. I decide to take a cycle rickshaw, and I want to see how it is to ride one of these things. I convinced the cycle rickshaw guy to let me ride his bike. It was harder than it looked. His tire was wobbly, and there was potholes all over the place. I meet up with Nea, a local pastry chef and graduate of the Cordon Bleu. She has two pastry shops here in Calcutta and wants to take me on a food crawl. Znea wants to start off with a refreshing local drink, a dude cola. Well, dude is what, milk? Yes, dude is milk. So it's just milk and cola. And ice. Bus. Yes, sir. Cheers. Here's the dude cola, dude. I don't know what it is, but the people here love their food sweet. You can try the lassi, the lassi is. La you guys have lassis? Lassi. Tell the guy no sugar in my lassi. I'm not interested in the sugar. I just want that nice, cool curd. I love the sour curd. This is why I don't like the sweet. So good. Everyone here is so friendly. They're proud of their food. The guy wants me to try his paneer tikka, which is cheese that's cooked in a tandoor with spices. Oh, nice. It was smoky and dipped in with that mint coriander and mustard chutney. It was nice, alongside the lassi. Am I going to get sick on this uh, street food? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Please be prepared. Yes. No, seriously. No, seriously, you would. <laughs> would you get sick? I would. Any of the locals would. Now, I've eaten street food in Delhi, Bombay, Rajasthan. Never have gotten sick. Never deli belly. So I'm up for the challenge and we'll see what happens. I mean, the amount of stuff you are going to be trying today, you're definitely going to get sick. It's going to be fun. I must be crazy. I've just been warned I'm going to get sick, but we head off anyway. As we continue down the streets of Calcutta, we come across a Baba, or a wise man who reads palms. You, you're very hot-headed. You should, like, chill in. I'm hot-headed? I'm Italian. But, like, I just get excited. Hot. You're going to have a lot of cars. I'm not a car guy. <laughs> You like helicopters? Get yourself a helicopter then. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We decided to take the city tram and check out the sights of Calcutta street level. Wasn't sure what to expect, but we hop on the tram and it's like we're in a film. It was kind of cool because the, the tram was like this tour throughout Calcutta. Going through the parks and just seeing people walk the streets and being there was neat. At one point, I'm hanging out. She says, okay, this is a stop. I, I jump off. She jumps off. She's like, no, 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 wrong stop. And we jump back on as the tram is taking off. The 10 rupees, 15 cents. What a steal. Best way of traveling. Get to see Calcutta up close and personal. Our first stop is at Kadi Roll. After all, Calcutta is the birthplace of these beauties. So what is it about these Kati rolls? <laughs> Nice, greasy, love it. <laughs> Cheers. Snia ordered a vegetarian kati roll. I figure I'm in Calcutta. I'm going to go big. Double, double. Double egg, double mutton. A kati roll is basically a paratha 
that's fried, and then with a bunch of different toppings. I had my kati roll with double egg, mutton, onions, chilies, fresh lime, lots of chili sauce. They roll it up and it's like the perfect carryout food. When the guy gave me my kati roll, it was like a dumbbell. It was heavy. Let's go for it, yeah. You bite into a kati roll and it is like the ultimate comfort food. Think of a really flavorful pizza that's been rolled with onions and mutton. It's compact and it's flavorful. This is just the beginning. We've got so much more left right now. So much more left? So much more, yes. I'm game for it all. <laughs> I'm game. Our next stop is the Varden Market for some Alu Tiki Gugni. So this is like a street food alley? Yes, it is. This is gugni, which is like chickpeas, and they're served with uh, potato tikkis. I mean, I love legumes. I love chickpeas. Gugni is chickpeas that's slow cooked, with some turmeric, potatoes, tomatoes, and it just gets this nice, soft, flavorful gravy. What makes this dish so delicious is how we finish it. Crisp onions, fresh ginger, coriander, squeeze a lemon, and that's it. Really, really simple, flavorful street food. Okay, come on, you have to help me with this. Simple, hearty, so delicious. I'm digging this whole street food culture here in Calcutta. Sir, this would even taste good with a little bit of pasta. You know, a little tubetti, little tubes. Put that in, mix it up. Nice, a little bit of parmigiano reggiano. Our street food tour continues with what the locals say is a must, Victoria Vada, named after Queen Victoria. See, I'm in the right area because I love lentils, legumes, I love all this kind of stuff. It's nice and heavy. The vadas are essentially lentils that have been crushed with fennel, some coriander, some chili pepper, salt pepper, and that's it. So this is like the uh, falafel balls. Instead of using chickpea, they're using just lentils. They get fried in hot, hot oil and they become these small, crispy, golden, falafel-esque vadas. And this is served with uh, chutney? With chutney. Uh -huh. We've got coriander chutney mm -hmm. and some garlic chutney. Excellent, okay. thank you. It's really hot. Really hot? Yeah. The vadas are piping hot, crispy and golden on the outside and inside this flavorful lentil. Now I understand. When you said get ready to be sick, it wasn't that I was going to get belly belly. It's like I'm going to get sick of overeating. Right. Zneya really wants me to try this local fruit. Zafed jamun. I really hope the water this guy's using is clean. It actually doesn't have a lot of taste in it. No, so it's, why do you have here? It actually doesn't it's have good. a lot of taste. It's good, like it, it's, it's not sweet or anything, uh -huh. but it's, it's really good. Okay. It's like a your stomach. It's you know, it doesn't taste like much. It has texture like watermelon, but completely tasteless. We have it straight up. You have the option of having salt and chat masala on it. My friend, I know I might look a bit Indian with the amount of chilies I eat, but I hope that water's okay. Pani tikka? Oh, it's good salad. It's very clean, he said. Yeah? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> As he giggles. <laughs> very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next area for this street food crawl was Russell Street. Yeah, yeah, there. We go straight for the chilla, a dosa-like pancake. Yeah, that one. Chilla. Chilla. The chilla is made up of lentils that have been grounded with some ginger, some onions, and some coriander. And then, like a dosa, it's pan-cooked, almost like a pancake. And then it gets rolled up, cut up, and served along with a chutney. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. The chilla was really flavorful, and then just dipping the chilla into the chutney was like the perfect snack. I'm telling you, the chillet was killer. Really good, but it's heavy. This is interesting because this is kind of like the elements of the vada and then the toppings of the gugni, which were cooked. Yeah. How do you say very good chilla? Bahat the cha. Bahat the cha. I've almost reached my limit with all this eating, and now Znia wants to take me to one more place. Puchkas. Puchkas? This looks like Pani Puri. This is Pani Puri, but it's just much better than that. I, I've been throughout India and everywhere else, these Puchkas are called Pani Puri. Essentially, these puffs 
that, you know, they just kind of crack a little hole in and then add some chickpea and potato and add flavored tamarind and mint water. And then you eat it in one bite. It's like this whole technique. One, two. Three. I'm not a huge Pani Puri fan, but I have to admit, these Pani Puris or Puchkas are probably some of the best I've ever had. I was only joking about the Pani Puri. Puchka. Ah, Pani Puri. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, we've been eating all night. Fried food, heavy food, legumes, potatoes. I wanted something refreshing. So right next to us was this guy selling kulfi. Kulfi is the Indian gelato. It is essentially sugar and milk that's cooked together, and then it's not churned, but just frozen. Thank you. You know, the kulfi was refreshing and just a good way to end the night. I'm so stuffed though. I am plugged. <laughs> the next day's Nay and I head off to try the local sweets, or what the Bengalis call nishti. This is one of the most famous sweet shops in Calcutta. It's one of the oldest. People swear by this place. Bengalis love their nishti, or desserts. It's a big part of the street food culture here in Calcutta. Okay, so what do you recommend I try? Okay, you have to try the ice cream sandesh here. Sandish, what's sandish? Sandish is something that is made out of milk. Ice cream sandish. Okay. The owner was just so nice. He wanted me to try everything. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now Bengalis love their nishti to be really, really sweet. I mean sweet is not the word. It's like uber sweet. Okay, so a question. How come you Bengalis like your nishti so so sweet? Bengali also sweet. Yeah? And Bengali language is also sweet language. Oh, the Bengali language is sweet. Right. The Bengalis are sweet, so the Mishti has, has to be sweet. sweet. Right. Okay, this one? This one is Jaggery Sandesh, uh -huh. coated with Jaggery. And Jaggery is sugarcane. Sugar cane. Yeah. Oh. Holy <laughs> magic. magic. I mean, this is like all sugar. <laughs> the owner was proud of his Mishti. He just wanted me to try and try and keep trying. I can't eat this anymore. This is like too sweet. At one point I was like having a total sugar rush and I was like, I, I can't, I can't finish this. This is mango sundae. Let's drink. You know, I want to tell you, never in my life have I had to build up courage, strength to eat mishti, to eat desserts. I like the food here in Calcutta, but the mishti can't handle it. It's just too sweet. Thank you. Very kind. Okay, thank you. Okay? We return to Znaya's Cafe Paris, where I make my own version of mishti. I have a lot of Bengali friends. When I tell them that their mishti or their cookies or sweets are too sweet, they're like, no, no, no. That's how it has to be. So what I'm going to do is take the sundash, and because they use a lot of jaggery, a lot of sugar cane in here, to me, this is going to be my sweetener. So just get the sun dash and give it a chop. I'm just breaking it up into small pieces. And that's what you want. Now, I love the yogurt here in India. It's tart, sour, and almost velvety-like. So I'm going to use the yogurt, which will be a nice sour backdrop to the sweet sun dash. And now my broken up sun dash goes right in. And now just mix it. You want to make sure that the sweet sun dash is evenly distributed. sour, a little sweet. I'm liking it. So onto a baking pan and I'm just going to top it up with a little bit of sugar. Just on top, not too much. And a little bit of cinnamon right on top just changes the flavor profile and gives it that extra spice. And that's it. I'm going to put it in a water bath, put it in an oven for about 10 minutes and it's going to become like a nice sweet thick custard. So here's the setting. We have Znea, who's a graduate of the Cordon Bleu as a pastry chef in Paris. And we have her mom and her mom's friend. So we have three locals trying this dessert I made. I wasn't sure if they were going to like it, because everyone has their own style for sweets. And here in Calcutta, they love their desserts really sweet. Do you think you should have had a little more sugar? No, it's really good. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> My recipe is your recipe. The curd is kind of sour, and then you have the sweetness of that sandesh, and it just comes together. 
I'm in Calcutta, the city of joy. I meet up with Chef Shivaji from the ITC Sonar, who specializes in street food. I'm going to start with the chola. These are the uh, Bengal gram. Bengal gram. And so it looks like chickpeas. Okay, and, and they're you, you soak it, then strain it, and keep it in a container covered with a moist cloth for 24 to 48 hours, then the sprouts come. Which gives some nice fresh crunch. And I just love these uh, sprouts. Sprouts. And celery also. Okay. Onions, onions, and I just love the crunch of the onions. And really, it's up to taste. Some fresh cucumbers. Fresh cucumbers. So just a couple of tablespoons. I mean, there's no right or wrong. Whatever you want. Some tomatoes. Generous amount of chilies. Generous. Okay, I like it. Okay, so these are just fresh chops. That's, that's for you, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> for me, you know what? Just for that, we're gonna see who likes the heat. Fresh coriander, chopped, nice. Roasted cumin. Roasted jeera. Roasted jeera. <laughs> So just a little hit. Next. Then this Bengali masala. Uh -huh. And what's this? This has roasted jeera, uh -huh. cumin, coriander, red chili, cloves, bay leaf. Is there a mango here or some sour mango? A little bit. A little bit? Okay, because you didn't say that. <laughs> you don't want to get you don't want to share all the recipe Same with right. me. Okay, so just a little hit. And black salt. A little bit of chat masala. A little bit of masala. That's it. And I'll squeeze a lemon for you. Okay. And I just love the, the flavor of the lemon. It just gives it a nice tart finish. Try this. But I know you'll miss a beer now. Okay. I need a beer. So refreshing. It's like street food that you don't have to feel guilty eating. I mean, the tomato, the onions, the crunch. This is cool. Oh, I got a nice chili. The next snack we make is jalmuri which is basically puffed rice that's seasoned with spices. And then in a bowl, you mix in all your vegetables, your onions, your cucumber, your tomatoes, fresh coriander, lots of chilies, a little bit of coconut, and some peanuts. Then the jalmuri is finished off with mustard oil. It rounds out the flavor and gives it a nice pungent taste. Try this. How is it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Inspired by the street food Chef Shivaji made earlier, I make a couple of snacks. The first, papri chat. So these are like these little fried crackers. It's just refined flour with a little bit of wild celery seeds. They've been fried and that's gonna be the base of this papri chat. Some boiled chopped potatoes. You can put as much or as little as you want. Some fresh chopped onions, green chilies, little hit of fresh coriander, some roasted toasted cumin or jeera that's been pounded. Just a little goes a long way. A little hit of the allspice masala. So you got a lot of flavors going on there. And now the fresh curd, lots of it. It's a bit tart, a bit sour. And I just love the creaminess it gives this chat. Now to balance some of the tartness of the curd, there's some coriander chutney. It's one big mess, but it's so good when you eat it. Some tamarind chutney, just a little tart, a little sour, and a little bit of these little kind of fried vermicelli from chickpea flour, just to put on top. And that's it, a papri chat, really simple street food and wicked flavor. The next snack was a chicken kobaraji. Simple chicken in a flavorful white egg batter. The chicken was first marinated with some local Calcutta limes fresh squeeze of lime juice, a little bit of salt, and I let it rest for about five minutes, just so all the flavors can intensify. Then I created a flavorful egg white batter. Some egg whites. Okay, some spring onions, green chilies, lots of them. Some fresh chopped up mint, some fresh chopped coriander, and some salt. Touch of black pepper and about a tablespoon of ginger garlic. So you can see there's lots of flavor going on. And now in goes some corn flour. This is all by eye, and I'm gonna whisk it up. You wanna make sure that it's a nice, creamy, silky batter, and there are no lumps of flour. That chicken that's been resting in the local lime juice, well, it's been coated and battered and now ready for the hot oil. Once that's nice and golden, onto the plate. With all that leftover white egg batter, they don't throw it out. I mean, what they do here is they cook the excess batter in the oil. Once it gets golden, they remove it. 
it's fluffy, crispy, and it gets served alongside the chicken. And that's it, really simple street food or bar food. It will be served with a little bit of mustard on the side, some fresh cut onions, and a cold beer. We try the snacks on the hotel grounds. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. To me, this was just fun bar food snacks to go along with the beer. You know, and it's funny because every time I tried something, it was like, that's my favorite. I would try the Jalmuri, and it was like, okay, that's my favorite. Then the papri chat is like, no, no, that's my favorite now. Then I would have the chicken kobiraji, and it's like, no, no, maybe this is the ultimate. The street food here in Calcutta filters into every level, from restaurants to five-star hotels like the ITC Sona. You guys here in Calcutta, you guys seem to copy everyone else. I mean, come on, your street food is just a derivative of what other people have. You know, your Victoria Vana is basically a falafel. The chilla is a dosa, and your huchka is, come on, pani puri. It's other way, Uncle. It's everyone copy us. Really? Yeah.